So in this video we're going to cover some unit analysis problems and in this video we'll go we'll just do problems one through four. Um, we already have the skills for this so if you would like you, you know feel free to um, raise the teacher. I, I would just urge you to please use the unit analysis um, method uh, that we've been practicing because it, it will be used in nursing and chemistry and other subjects so it's a useful method to know. So let's start with question one. Now um, just a reminder that if you have a printer it would be great to print off this worksheet and, and just fill it out as I'm doing with me. Um, if you don't have a printer that's fine just just write unit analysis problems question one and then just write it on paper that's fine and turn it in with the rest of your work. Thank you. So. We'll start with this first one. How many miles will a person run during a 10 kilometer race? So the first thing we're going down is write down what we have, okay? And, and then think about what we want to convert to. So what do we have? We have 10 kilometers. Now what's the shorthand for kilometers? It's km for kilometers, right? 10 km, right? And we want to go to miles. So we want to go from kilometers to miles and the shorthand for miles is m i m i for miles right and we like to write this as 10 km over 1 and then we multiply it by a unit fraction and a unit fraction is simply so a fraction where the top and bottom are the same let me give an example of a unit fraction for fun now here's a unit fraction so we know that 2 times 5 equals 10 right so that means that 2 times 5 divided by 10 would be equal to 1. Here's another example of a unit fraction. We know that um, uh, 2 plus 3 equals 7. No, it doesn't. 2 plus 3 equals 5. So 2 plus 3 over 5 would be equal to 1 because both sides are equal. Okay. So and that's kind of how we, how we deal with this. So we find a conversion factor from the list here. Now is there anything that relates kilometers to miles? If you see this guy here, right? 0 0.621 miles equals 1.00 kilometers or one kilometer, right? And so that means we can form unit fractions like this, you know, so 0 0.621 miles equals one kilometer that means we can say that one kilometer over 0 0.621 miles is equal to just the number one because these things quantities are equal if you divide one quantity by the other and they're equal then then you get one right and the other thing we can write is we can write 0 0.621 miles over one kilometer that's also equal to one because these quantities are the same now the only question is which one of these fractions, unit fractions, are we going to use? This one or this one, right? And as we've gone over before, look, what we really want to do is we want to go from kilometers to miles. So we want the kilometers to cross cancel. So I'd like you all to write this down. Just put km there on the bottom. The reason we're doing that is because we want the kms to cross cancel, right? So that will cross cancel with that, right? Now. 1 kilometer, as we saw, equals 0 0.621 miles, right? So these cross cancel and we end up with, on the top, 10 times 0 0.621. If you multiply a decimal times 10 without using a calculator, what's that going to do? Multiply by a factor of 10, it'll move this decimal point one space to the right and you'll get 6 point two one and we've got miles m i okay so that's question one now let's have a look at question two the moon is two hundred fifty thousand miles away how many feet is it from earth okay so let's think about this uh what do we have and what do we want to get what we have is we're starting from is 250,000 miles. Agreed? We're starting with that and we want to get what? We want to go from miles to feet. Right? Convert from miles to feet. So 
to use the unit analysis method, we divide, the, put that over one. We multiply that by a unit fraction. Okay. And we want to go from miles to feet. So before I even look up here to find a unit fraction or to make a unit fraction, I know that I'm going to put mi down there because I want these guys to cross cancel, right? So now please look up at the conversion factors and try to find one that converts from miles to feet. It's on the left. So if you see this, one mile equals 5,280 feet. And now press pause and I want you to, to complete that unit fraction. Just, just do that step. Complete that unit fraction there. Press pause on the video and do it. Okay, I'll do it now. So one mile equals 5,280 feet. So one mile equals 5,280 feet. See that? And that's our unit fraction. So this whole thing, red fraction here, is just equal to one because both quantity on the top and the bottom are the same. Now we can cross cancel the miles and we get 250,000 times 5280. I'll just plug that in the calculator. And that's 1, 3, 2, and there's lots of zeros. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven zeros. And for every three zero every three digits you, you put a a comma, right? So that you can helps you to read what this number actually is. So let's start from the outside and, and if we put a comma here now now we've we've and these we're in the thousands uh place and then we put another comma and now this is the millions place and then one more comma and what is the place value of this digit here for the one if you remember so there's so we've got three three digits three digits and three more so that's nine digits and then this digit here would be this is the billions place billions right so billions go there so we have one billion 320 million and the the unit of measurement is feet okay now how this would be written would be in fact one about you would say it's about one one billion it's about one billion you agree with me well we could write that and we should write that 1.32 billion feet okay now what's the rule well the rule is like it just kind of makes sense that that's if you were communicating with somebody that's what you would call it you wouldn't say I've got you wouldn't kind of write that whole number out it's a lot of digits so anyway okay question three a family pool holds 10,000 gallons of water how many cubic meters is this so please do the first step write down what we have as a fraction over one Write down what we have as a fraction over one. Okay, I'll do it now. I hope you got 10,000 gallons GAL over one. Okay, that's the first step, right? Over one. Okay. Now the next step is multiply that by an appropriate unit fraction. Okay. And, um, can you find, uh, oh, sorry, before we do that, I want you to tell me what unit do we have and what are we trying to convert into, right? So we're starting with what? What's the unit we're starting with? We're starting with gallons, and we want to convert that gallons into what? Cubic meters. Do you know that cubic meters can be written M with a little cube up there, right? A cubic meter, by the way, if you imagine a um, box that is one meter, oops, sorry, a box that is one meter uh, across, one meter deep, uh, one meter high, okay? Okay. 
That's a cubic meter. Cubic meter, right? And so the question is how many of these cubic meters um, will will we need for, for ten thousand gallons of water, right? And again, a meter is is is, is uh, a little bit more than a yard. Okay, so it's about one. It's a little bit more than so. It's about one yard on e on each uh, uh, width, length, and height. Anyway, uh, if we go to our conversion chart, can you find what we need for for going from gallons to meet, uh, to cubic meters? Let's see one here, right? Two six four point two gallons equals one cubic meter, right? This guy here. And we want to go from gallons to meters cubed. So what what do we need on the bottom? What do we need in the bottom to cross cancel? We need gallons down here, right? So we have two six four point two gallons is equal to one cubic meter, and I'll just write it meter cubed, cubic meter, right? And the gallons cross cancel. See that? And we're left with the meters cubed or cubic meters. And um, it's 10,000 over 264.2. I'll just write it as this just for fun. 10,000 over 264.2. And the guns cross cancel, and that'll be meters cubed, okay? So that equals, I'll plug that in the calculator, divided by. And we get 37.8501355, etc. Now, think about it. We're, what's, what's the measurement here? Are we, are we, we're talking about a family pool, a swimming pool, right? So, so it's, it's approximately that, right? Because if we rounded to two decimal places, it would be 37.85, right? And that's cubic meters. And in fact, in real life, if you were really talking about something like this, would you really go up to to your to your to somebody and say, "Hey, um, we need this, this pool is going to hold thirty-seven point eight five cubic meters of water." I mean, what's a few extra buckets of water, right? So, in real life, you would probably round that to what? What would you round that to? Just just in real life, I would say we just call that thirty-eight. Just round it up to thirty-eight cubic meters. Right, ten thousand gallons is about thirty-eight cubic meters. To be honest, in real life, that this ten thousand gallons is probably an estimate anyway, so that's about right. You might even say that's about forty. Round it even more. Um, so now, question four: The average American student is in class three three hundred and thirty minutes a day. How many hours per day is this? Okay. Um, this might lend, I mean, this particular problem, if you really want to, you know, there's two, you could write it as 330 minutes per one day and, and go from there. We could do that. Uh, we really don't need to, though. It's kind of superfluous. It's, 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 it's too much. We just want to go really from what to what. So it's 330 minutes per day. How many hours per day? So we're starting with what? We're starting with minutes, and we want to get what? We want to get hours, right? Starting with minutes, we want to get hours. So let's write it 330 min, and we'll just put it over 1. OK, we want to go to hours. So we're going to multiply that by unit fraction. I want to go from minutes to hours. Now, tell me. Before we even look up a conversion factor, what do I want? Because I want to get rid of the minutes and want to be left with hours. So what, what, what should I do here? I want to write something down here. What do I want to write down here? See, if I write minutes there, we know that those minutes are going to cross cancel. So to me, that's the trick. Put it over one and, and let yourself cross cancel that way, right? And then hopefully you don't need to look at any conversion facts. And by now you might know that one hour equals 60 minutes. So we just have 60 minutes, one hour, right? And 
sure enough, the minutes cross cancel, and we can write that. Um, you can just divide right away, obviously. Um, 330 over 60. Um, just for fun, I'm going to do it by hand. I'm going to go, okay, if I divide top and bottom by 10, I got 33 over 6. And if I go 3 into 6, I get 2. And 3 into 33, I get 11. And 11 over 2. So I have got 11 <coughs> over 2 hours. And I know that 2 into 10 goes 5 times, remainder 1. So 5 and a half hours, right? Or 5.5 .5 hours. And by the way, that's 5 hours and how many minutes? Half of an hour is how many minutes? 30 minutes, 5 hours, 30 minutes. Okay, so next question is how many seconds is this? So we've got to get back to the original question. The average American student is in class 330 minutes per day. How many seconds is 330 minutes? That's what this is asking, right? So we want to go 330 minutes over 1 and we want to convert that to seconds. So go ahead and convert that to seconds. Press pause on the video, do it all yourself and then I'll, I'll do it with you. Okay, I hope you press pause in the video. I'm going to do it now. So we put minutes down here because they need to cross cancel. We want to go to seconds, so SEC for seconds. And we can check up here, but I hope you know now, one minute equals 60 seconds. One minute equals 60 seconds. The minutes cross cancel. And we get 330 times 6. I'm going to do that really quick. Um, I'm going to go 33 times 6 just for fun. That's 18. Carry 1. And 36 is 18. And 1 is 1. 198. So I got 198. But remember it was... 330 times 60, so it should be two more zeros on that. And that is seconds, right? So 19,800 seconds.